Hey, welcome back to the Campfire Series brought to you by North Dakota State Parks and Recreation. Today we have Dana and Charles from the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center and Fort Mandan, and we're going to be talking about the history of trade in North Dakota. Hello and welcome to the Campfire Series from North Dakota Parks and Recreation. I'm Dana Morrison. And I'm Charles Robinette. And we're from the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center in Fort Mandan. Today we are presenting on trade in North Dakota. Who were the fur traders? What did they trade? Where did they trade? And how this changed over time? Trade dates back thousands of years. A series of extensive and sometimes elaborate trade routes were established throughout what is now North Dakota and beyond. Southern Canadian tribes would trade with Mandan and Hidaza, while they in turn would trade with other tribes who would keep the chain going. Eventually, some European goods began to filter into the northern plains by traveling or nomadic tribes. Nomadic tribes were a key factor in making these trade transactions possible as they would move around and continually trade with tribes in the region. Some of the items traded included furs, agriculture, Knife River Flint, and eventually horses. Trade was firmly established in the Northern Plains by the time the French Canadians arrived, who would go on to influence trade in the region. European traders in North America included the French and eventually the British. They found trade a potentially lucrative business and wanted to get in on it. Europe was seeing a demand of furs and the intrepid explorers ventured deep into the heart of what is now North America to find furs to send back to Europe and profit from the trade. French trappers soon began arriving in larger numbers to the Northern Plains, traveling on the Red and Missouri Rivers. Fur trade in the Northern Plains was already a well-established enterprise by 1804 when the Lewis and Clark expedition arrived at the Mandan and Hidatsa villages. Lewis and Clark would have known the village's location as well as the tribe who inhabited them because of the fur trade industry. After the completion of the expedition, a number of members returned west to take part in the fur trade and help establish American fur trade companies in this region. In the 19th century, American fur trading posts and forts operated throughout present-day North Dakota. These forts typically employed Americans, Europeans, and Native Americans. While North Dakota was rich in furs, such as bison and beaver, the life of a fur trapper was not for the faint of heart. Rival companies could alter pricing, making it hard to sell your pelts. Poor weather could make it difficult to gather or lower the quality of the furs, and traveling by river on steamboats was a hazardous journey. Tree snags, explosions, fire, and collisions were just a few of the incidents that caused treacherous river travel, but these vessels were much faster than men rowing and pulling against the current of the mighty Missouri River. Speed was important for business. Steamboats would carry goods from St. Louis and beyond, such as homewares, cloth, beads, guns, hatchets, and more. These would be valuable items for fur traders and their families, and could be procured by trading in furs they had collected. From intertribal trade, fur trapping, and steamboat travel, North Dakota has been an active trade area for centuries. It has many valuable resources that attracted traders from all over the world, and continues to attract visitors to enjoy its wonder. Thank you for watching this episode of the Campfire Series. We hope you enjoyed it and learned more about Trade North Dakota. We invite you to hike, bike, kayak, or boat the many North Dakota state parks and see if you can spot some of the wildlife that fur traders who trapped and take in the breathtaking sights traders would have seen while exploring North Dakota. Hey, thanks for joining us. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch the Campfire series all summer long brought to you from North Dakota State Parks and Recreation. See you next time.